Welcome to Chapter 4 of the Quick Train Modeler Getting Started tutorial series. In this module, you will learn how to use the measurement line to make measurements and terrain profiles. You'll also learn how profiles are different in point clouds versus surface models. We will be using the Iowa Rural LiDAR data in this video, so feel free to visit appliedimagery.com download and download the zip file containing the Iowa Rural LiDAR data and imagery. Let's start by loading the Iowa DSM into the scene. As we learned in Chapter 2, we can drag and drop the file from Windows Explorer to open a 3D model. This is one of four ways we can open data. Let's also change the height color palette to earth tones as we learned in Chapter 3. Right click the height color toggle and select the earth tones palette. The measurement line is an excellent tool for measuring distances, building heights, profiles, planning routes, and many other things. To place a measurement line, click the measurement line button and a small crosshair will appear. Left click in the scene where you want to begin the line and drag the line to where you want it to end and right click. If you need multiple nodes, left click repeatedly for each intermediate node, then right click to end the line. When you end the line, a context menu will appear with many useful options to choose from. If the context menu accidentally disappears, you can right click on the active menstruation line in the layer tree to display the context menu again. To change the way a line looks or what is displayed on the end of the line, choose Menstruation Display Options from the Context menu. Terrain hugging lines are most useful in surface models, while floating lines are most useful in point clouds. Changing the measurement type alters what is displayed in the real-time readout of the measurement line. 3D distance is probably the most useful as it accounts for changes in height. Choosing Z is useful for quickly gauging, building heights, and changes in elevation. Measurement lines can be edited after they are placed. To edit a line, double click on it. The nodes will appear as circles. Left click the circles to drag the nodes to new positions or right click to add or delete nodes as needed. If you accidentally close a line before you're finished, it can be recovered by right clicking on the vectors folder and selecting Recover Menstruation Line. To save a line to return to later, right click on the active menstruation line and choose Create QT Vector. The line will appear as a separate vector in the layer tree. To make it an active menstruation line again, right click on the vector and show as menstruation. To export a menstruation line to another file format, right click on the active menstruation line in the layer tree then select Export and choose the appropriate format for export, such as KML, Shapefile, or DXF. The Profile Analysis tool is very useful for seeing a terrain as a linear profile for surface models or as a scatter plot of points in point clouds. To access the Profile Analysis tool, choose Profile Analysis tool from the Menstruation Line Context menu. Within the Profile tool, you can use the mouse to zoom and pan. There are many buttons within the Profile Analysis tool, but some of the most useful are the Mark Cursor in 3D, Force Proportional Scaling, and the Measurement tool. The Mark Cursor in 3D button places a vertical red line in the Profile window and a 3D arrow in the 3D scene. Sliding the vertical red line left and right moves the arrow in the 3D scene, correlating the position in the profile to the position in the 3D scene. Force Proportional Scaling forces the profile window to have the same scaling for both the vertical and horizontal axes, thus accurately depicting slopes. The small measurement button in the profile window enables a measurement of distances, heights, and angles within the profile window. The principles of the profile tool are the same for both point clouds and surface models, but the profile display itself will look very different for point clouds. It will consist of a slice of the point cloud, and the width of the slice will be defined in the width window in the profile analysis tool. The width can be changed by entering a new width and clicking get buffer points. The mask to area in 3D button can be useful in isolating the 3D view to only the points that are selected in the profile. The offset buttons will step the profile through the point cloud in increments of the width selected in the width window. That concludes Chapter 4 of the Quick Train Modeler Getting Started series. 
At this point, you should be comfortable with using the measurement line tool to make basic measurements and terrain profiles, both in surface models and point clouds. Our next step will be to do some more advanced analysis, such as line of sight, slope, and helicopter landing zone analysis. Please view the rest of the series on our website and contact us if you need any help. We'd love to hear from you.